All right, so moving on, Mass Effect Andromeda details a few new squad mates. Um, this week, Mass Effect Andromeda is less than two months away. And following the release of the latest cinematic trailer, we're beginning to see more information about the team you'll be leading in the game. If you haven't seen the new cinematic trailer, you need to go, go watch, watch it. it. No. Um, this is where a lot of the details are coming from. You also get to see the new villain, which looks boss. Mm. Like he's, boss, boss. He's really a boss. You know? yeah, I mean, it's actually yeah. fitting that he looks boss since he yeah. is one. <laughs> <laughs> In a new Andromeda initiative video, the Mass Effect website, Core Harper. Second in command under the original Path Rider, Path Rider, Pathfinder Alec Ryder, see, <laughs> introduces us to some of the team. Harper herself is a botic and takes charge of the team's ground missions. She has apparently served with the Asari Commandos, meaning that we may see her as the bridge between the human team and their alien allies. Her character assessment in the video says that if warranted, she'll succeed Alec Ryder as Pathfinder. Given we know that either his son or daughter actually take on the role, is a mystery what will happen to keep Cora out of the job. Uh, we also get another look at Ryder's siblings, Sarah and Scott, presumably prior to when we pick out pick one to be our protagonist in the game. The both Alliance recruits and are apparently already experienced in the field. Not long-winded training sections, then hopefully. Uh, Scott has previously helped protect the Arctic Station, while Sarah has supported a Prothean research team. Perhaps we'll see more militaristic and scientific outlooks from them. Meanwhile, Liam Costa specializes in crisis response and is described as somewhat of an idealist. According to the character assessment section of the video, he has a multidisciplinary skills. It seems to indicate that he'll be an all-rounder in terms of skill tree aspects. SAM, or SAM, is the acronym of the ship's artificial intelligence, short for Simulated Adaptive Matrix. SAM was co-designed by Alex Ryder and the unseen Dr. Ellen Ryder. It receives a direct feed from Alex Ryder's sensory input. All members of the team have implants, allowing them to communicate directly with the AI. We expect SAM will be a game's ED-style companion AI. Will, will she be able to go into a, 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 body. a cyborg body? I don't know. That, that was always an interesting it thing uh, from Mass Effect 3. So um, I'm glad that they put out that trailer. Uh, gave it a lot of it. They don't really talk about the um, big baddie yeah. in this one, but he looks awesome. I can't remember the name of it. It's like, starting with an A, I want to say. Can we talk about the, the best quote from any of the trailers? I don't need an army. I have a cro. <laughs> I have a Krogan. <laughs> and there's like shows at Krogan just like destroying everybody. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, that's that was my favorite part of ev of any of the the trailers or anything for it because we all know. Oh and yeah. If you have an issue, you just send a you send Rex or you send uh, Grunt. Grunt. In, yeah. And, and they take care of it. And I, I one day I hope they make it where you can choose other than a human. Like I know that's kind of like the way Mass Effect works or whatever. Yeah. But being able to play as a Krogan, a Krogan. Oh, that would be so boss. We're using boss a loss. Yeah. Boss a loss. Moving on. Sounds like a good spinoff game title. Resident Evil 7 DLC coming to PS4 next week. And I'll talk about Resident Evil here in just a second. Resident Evil 7's first two DLC packs, Band Footage Volume 1 and 2, are coming to PlayStation 4 January 31st and February 14th, respectively. Both Volume 1 and 2 will be then released on Xbox One and, February, and PC February 21st. Band Footage Volume 1 includes two tape missions and a new game mode, according to... According to a post by Capcom's website, Bedroom challenges players to quietly escape from a locked room, while Nightmare is a wave based on survival missions. The new mo mode, Ethan Must Die, is described as a tough-as-nail mode separate from the tapes and story of the main game. The second band footage DLC will also include two tape missions and a game mode called Jack's 55th Birthday, a comical extra game in which you must feed Jack tons of food. 21. I don't know what. 21, the first tape mission included with the first DLC will have players gambling body parts with Lucas Baker. The second daughters, the second daughters focus on the Baker family prior to the start of the main game. Each pack will be available for $10 USD or free for season pass owners. So, all that crazy talk in there. 
It's just, y'all just kind of like, what is all this stuff? This, I've, been, yeah. I've been watching like your live streams and other people gameplays. Mm-hmm. I want to get it so bad. The game is scary as crap. And now the garage part where you know you're trying mm-hmm. to kill him and he gets in the car. How many times did you die on that scene? I died three times. I want to say <laughs> that just looks tough. Oh, it was tough. It was very <laughs> tough. Like. Daddy as a character is very hard to deal with just because he's very overpowered. Um, but the game is scary. It's gorgeous, like in a disturbing, sick way. Like the yeah. graphics are absolutely amazing. And the gameplay, like it, it feels right. Like it just feels right. Like it's not old school Resident Evil where it has like that fixed like camera. Where you, like, to shoot, you have to zoom in. I, well, even like the old school where the, like, it, uh, like the really? camera would be in the hall, like you'd run down the hall and do stuff. Like It's not that. It's first person, and I think that it makes it way more immersive. It's Resident Evil meets like an Alan Wake. More like Outlast. Outlast? Yeah, think? more Outlast, uh, but it's definitely Resident Evil. Yeah. And it's it's got some weird stuff. The puzzles are very intricate, which I like. Um, no keys. No keys, no <laughs> keys. Never get to find that key. Um, so I'm I'm enjoying it. I've done two live streams so far, and I'm going to do the whole game live streamed okay. uh, because people are really enjoying it that way. Um, but moving on, Overwatch passes 25 million players. Overwatch has now passed 25 million players, Activision Blizzard announced today. Word comes, by the way, of the game's official Twitter account, which tweeted out the out the milestone with the message the world needs heroes and over 25 million have answered the call the fight for the future isn't over yet though are you with us it's a good voiceover thanks you're with us now uh, (laughs) yeah i am uh it should be noted that 25 million figure which is up to 5 million from october is presumably referring to the total registered overwatch accounts blizzard has recently released sales numbers for the multiplayer shoot Shooter earlier this week, Overwatch Year of the Rooster event went live and is currently running until February 13th. The event brings over 100 themed costumes, uh, cosmetic items, and a brand new brawl called Capture the Rooster. You can check that out and the skins over on IGN's. And the Capture the Rooster is the, the Capture the Flag mode that they've added on, which is really cool because up until now, all you had was the you know get to hold this objective and mm-hmm. then take the the car all the way to the end which has been fun but i do like that they're they're adding new modes and stuff like yeah, that yeah they definitely need to add new modes to keep it fresh and that that's one thing especially if you have just a multiplayer game you have to keep it interesting yeah. you got to keep people involved in it and i'm glad to see that they're they had the one for you know Christmas time where it was all snow and had you know where you throw snowballs and everything yeah. and now they have year of the rooster and I, didn't they do a Halloween one as well. So having those themes around there is really nice. I agree. So, um, former PlayStation 4 exclusive Ace Combat 7 is going to be coming to Xbox One and PC. It had previously only been announced for PlayStation 4, but Bandai Namco has announced Ace Combat 7 Skies Unknown will be coming to PC and Xbox One as well. PlayStation 4 players will be able to play sections of the game developed specifically for the PlayStation VR headset. There's been no word yet on whether the VR section will eventually make their way to the PC version. Um, have any of y'all ever played a Ace Combat game? I have not. Robbie? I'm trying to think. I feel like I have. <laughs> How old are the games? Oh, they're old. Like This, this is a big franchise. I, I've you might have. I, I've played a lot of flying games. Yeah, you so. might have. If you played a flying game on PlayStation 2, it's more than likely yeah. going to be Ace Combat. Uh, I played 4 back in the day, PlayStation 2. Love the mess out of that game. Uh, very anime. Like, it has anime. Like, like it was like still shots back in the day that gave the story, but that's that's how they kind of tell it these days. Yeah. Uh, looking forward to it. Um, I know for a while it will be exclusive, like I said, in their PSVR but I'm I'm certain that it will come to the Oculus and the HTC Vive as well uh, down the road, especially yeah. since it's now going to be Xbox and PC. Don't know if it's pl- uh, cross-play. So there we'll you see. go. Next up, the disappointing news of the week. Tomb Raider, Deus Ex developer, making an Avengers game. Square Enix and Marvel have announced a multi-platform partnership starting with an Avengers game made by Tomb Raider developer Crystal Dynamics and Deus Ex developer 
Ineos Montreal, due for release in 2018. So are both of them working on it at the same time? That's that, what it sounds like. Yeah. Announced first on Twitter, there are a few details so far other than the cryptic use of the word reassemble in the tra- trailer and hashtags. The current name of the game appears to be the Avengers Project, but it's mostly a certain working title. Um, have y'all watched the trailer? Yes. Yes. It's very vague. This uh, With the hashtag reassemble, <sighs> could this be... The third installment of the uh, Ultimate Alliance Ultimate Alliance games. I'd be surprised, but it would be pretty interesting because yeah. the last one was Civil War. Yeah. So it could be, and and that's what I'm playing off of the name with is the yeah. reassemble. So I would want it. I mean, I'm excited for it. Yeah, if that's what it is. Be interesting. Crystal Dynamics is an amazing team. So is Edios, um, Edios Montreal. Montreal. Uh, both of them make really great games, and you could see that from both Deus Ex and Tomb the Raider. Tomb Raider games have been absolutely amazing, the last two that have come out. Uh, so if they're working on it, great, but there's not enough information for me to even be excited. Yeah, and I think that's the idea, is they want because if they... Like they want it to ha- be shrouded in a little bit of mystery, but and they like, shouldn't have said anything. Like they literally should not have said anything. It's just like, hey, we're working on an Avengers game. We're not going to tell you anything. Yeah, and you know they're playing off of because everybody wants the Ultimate Alliance three to come out, and I think yeah. that's what they're playing off of is is people's hype about this. So you're going to see hashtag reassemble all over Instagram, all over Twitter, hashtag, Facebook. Hashtag hashtag. I'll be surprised if it is Ultimate Alliance 3. I, it could be a game in the same mold, yeah. but maybe set in a different title. I, I did read the possibility that this could set up a Marvel gaming universe that would be separate from the cinematic. That'd be cool. That would be cool. Yeah. So we'll just have to see. So there you go. We don't know anything. You don't know anything, but you've been informed <laughs> about nothing. Exactly. I know a lot about that. <laughs> Last part. <laughs> <laughs> that happens to me all the time. Perks of having a beard. Yeah. <laughs> all right, guys, here we go. Prey release date has been announced. Bethesda has announced that Prey will be the release be released worldwide because they actually know how to release things worldwide. Nintendo. Nintendo. I haven't even got on my soapbox. Last week I got on my soapbox just a little bit and then I left about Nintendo. But anyway. Sessler's soapbox. Will be released worldwide. <laughs> On May 5th, 2017, for Xbox One, PS4, and PC, a new trailer revealed that the release date, along with our best with our best look at yet at the main character, Morgan Yu, and the alien threat he's fighting on board the space station, Talos One. Along with the news, Bethesda also announced the Cosmonaut Shotgun Pack, a bonus pack that will be available for players who pre-order the Prey. Don't pre-order games. Jesus Christ, stop it. Let this thing die. Not the game. But this whole culture of pre-ordering, like, we'll give you this thing if you pre-order. They're just wanting money from you. Exactly. Yep. And it's, it's, it's so dumb. Yep. And, like, the special editions have gotten worse and worse over yep. the years. So just get your games digitally or get them physically. Just don't pre-order. Show them. Just, just make it stop. Because, I mean, look at back when we were in high school when we would be able to, you know, pre-order. Get a freaking... Master Chief helmet. Uh, yeah, like they had these huge things. I mean, I remember, I, I remember getting it. I don't remember what it was, but even the um, my love, I got I got that a lot in high school. But um, the you don't need it. The Star Wars game. What is it? The Kotor. No. Force Unleashed. Force Unleashed. Oh God, those were the worst. Exactly. They and got a little freaking USB. Say, they were. That was the worst one. Yeah. But I mean, that was still. I mean, it yeah. was okay, but no, I mean, it, wasn't, it wasn't okay. It was bad. I mean, but what you're getting nowadays sucks. Yeah, like Gears, Halo, um, those have been some of the best ones that have yeah. been put out. So, guys, if Stop. you want that shiny shotgun, that's not really going to do you any good. Nope. You can pre-order it if you want. It's just like, excuse me, but Dragon Age, that's the one that pissed me off. The, the Oh, pre-order it, you get this super cool sword or, or this. And five minutes into the game, guess what? Those weapon, that armor that you just got, obsolete. 
within five minutes. Yeah, that's pretty much how it goes. So that does it for the show proper. Once again, guys, you can go over to patreon.com slash nerdcave. Go support us. Get this uh, podcast early. You get it early. You get it Monday instead of the the saps. They get it Friday. But you're not saps. You're just people who don't want to pay a dollar. But we yeah. understand. Yeah. Well, but we'd love for you to pay a dollar. Or yeah. five dollars. Yeah. My bad. And also, this week will be the new, 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 new bonus episode oh, of the, oh, pay, uh, the bonus podcast. I was I was leading you there, but nobody was going with me. 